Okay, this is going to be great. The geologic oddity in the deep ocean. Millions of valuable magnesium nodules. Well, what are magnesium nodules? The ocean floor is a strange geologic oddity. There, millions of rounded rocks, which are essentially solid geodes called nodules, are spread across the ocean floor seemingly with no apparent pattern. In some areas, they cover 70% of the ocean floor, while in other places they are non-existent. These mysterious masses of rock are referred to as manganese nodules and are incredibly valuable. Why? They contain economic concentrations of several industrial metals such as copper and cobalt. As a result, these unique features have long been a target of underwater mining operations and an attempt to facilitate an easy profit. So, how do these unusual manganese nodules form? Why do they only exist in very specific stretches of the ocean floor? This video will answer these two questions and discuss this geologic oddity. Although manganese nodules are found around the planet, even in shallow seas such as the Baltic Sea, they tend to be found in the deep ocean. Specifically, they are most frequently found at between 4,000 and 6,000 meters depth, with one example location with widespread nodules being the Peru Basin offshore of Peru. With this being said, the vast majority of the ocean floor does not contain manganese nodules, indicating a unique geologic environment which is required to form them. On average, manganese nodules tend to be between 2 and 6 centimeters wide, although they can range from the size of a pea to 25 centimeters in length. These they can range to X absolutely enormous as well. These nodules contain onion-like layers which formed on top of one another with a distinct core and outer shell. So, how do these nodules form? In the oceans, various factors have led to numerous ions and compounds distributed throughout the water. Alright, they're going to talk about concretions. And uh, I'm going to show you another video about some other people talking about these concretions as well. However, I know exactly what formed them. And what formed them was biology. Okay, I had long ago done the research on these. They are not concretions. They are from a biological creature. And you see these layers that they're showing, and then they're showing the concretion under there? These are layers of tissue, and then the concretions form, and then there's other layers of tissue below. And I, again, I've shown this in extreme detail. And they are not only here as we, you know, they're showing them in the ocean here and there. They're literally everywhere, and they're also on Mars. See these? These are the Mars blueberries. This is from the Curiosity mission, where they had a rover go up there. And they said, what the hell are these things? Well, those are the same balls that we're seeing here on the Earth. And they are biological. This is also on Mars. These are the stone balls. These are the straps, part of biology. This is pinched interstitium. This is as well. This is just laying out flat. And this is stretched interstitium. What is interstitium? Let me show you. That's what interstitium is. And these are the little black blueberries and the moky marbles and the stone balls that are all over the earth. There's different styles of these. And I have them in every... I've, I've researched this for many years. I understand exactly what they are. And they are different styles of balls in different places in the body. Let me show you that. But before I do, let me show you how big these get. You see those? Those are the same things. This is the interstitium right here. That is the mucosa layer, which is skin or, or um, you know, a membrane of some sort. And then you have the fleshy, gooey area that is the interstitium with all the straps and so forth and the ball's anchor. When it erodes, they lay on the ocean floor just as they're talking about. And here they are. the same things right here. This stuff erodes. We saw it on Mars. They were stretched out. Some were stretched this way and some were gathered up that way. That's exactly what that stuff does. And the balls are there to bring everything back to where it belonged in the first place. All right, I'm just going to run down a batch of different ones. You see they get gigantic. Now, this is another, this is a style that has the, like the eggshell looking stuff around it. They come different ways. Those are ones that are just showing where they are. Those are in skin. Well, you see that kaolin looking clay, that real soft clay? That's skin. Same thing here. That's the skin. 
this is um, these are different style and they have they break in layers like this and I have a ton of those shots too all right these are the little marbles that they find all over and they can crack like that um, sometimes they take on colors of transition metals in these layers depends on where they were and the conditions that they fossilized it this is a different style remember how the other one had like an eggshell well this is different that has a core in the center and it has these I think this is chert you know flint uh, this is a style that you know this is a stalk that feeds it with blood and so forth and this just broke they break I don't know why there's it's just a different style stone Saying, but there's have stone balls, and these things are absolutely gigantic. All right, there's one broken open. This has a different style. See, this has little pockets inside. Now, they're in different locations in the body. All right, here's some here. That, you know, but that's a house. And that's a car. So they're pretty good size, these things. Right, here they are up close, and they have these layers of mineralization. That, that is an eyeball, I believe, and it's not, you see how it had pinches over the edge and has all these lenses looking things. Uh, that's not a giant stone ball. I thought it was at first, but it isn't. Look at the size of that one. And that has the core, has a center, like sand in the center. All right, look at this style. This has the fabric inside. And I think this one can squish around a little bit. I'm not sure where that's located in the body. I don't think anybody knows anything about this. I know more about this than anybody in the world right now. That's another one of those styles like I just showed you. These pockets are natural. And that stone ball was at one time in some creature's body. This was from my buddy Lee Simpson. He's found another one here that shows how it erodes. And this is uh, that I don't know what's going on there. Somebody cut that apparently long, long, long ago. But these are tendon attachments into balls that are underneath. And then this was like muscle or something. Uh, Lily Lavender sent me this one. That stone ball is attached. And that's where the the stalk came out of it. same style of ball like this and Iopetus the moon has this exact same structure it has an equatorial ridge now all right here's your here's your magnesium coated balls these are the Moki marbles that's why they're blueberries on Mars they call them the Mars blueberries here we call them Moki marbles and all kind of other things here's a bunch of this other stuff these are all these balls are on stalks all right, that's in skin. This is white clay skin. And that's how big these balls are. And that's where the stalk came out. And they're all over. It's not just one. They come in huge clusters. That's why they say they're here and there. And this is a, a, one of them, these. which This has the equatorial ridge. and turned into an opal inside. And the only reason they do that is if they're in some type of chemistry that has a lot of transition metals. These, let's see that curve there? That's not there by accident. That's a tendon ball. The creatures that were on this earth are just so unbelievable. Here's another one. I don't know what style that's from, but that looks like a church style. And uh, they used to make plates out of them, see? <laughs> this is one we saw, remember, see the kids playing on one of the big stone ball, and that one was cut and polished and so forth. This was somebody made this, I believe. It's not real. These here are some, they look like they're fruits or something or I don't know what the hell they are to be honest with you but they don't look like stone balls that I've ever seen uh, here look at this these are moki marbles you see them? the same stuff these are they call them concretions they are not concretions these are from biology and this is the mud that eroded away off which was skin above it and below this is where the skin see the skin can push and pull and do all these things and then come back and that's what these balls are. Those are the anchors. Well, now the skin's all eroded away, turned into mud, and the anchors now are still on the top of the basement layer of the skin. And this is some part of this creature's body. These are organs or something. I'm telling you, what we have missed is everything. All right, and here's the same balls. These are the same balls right here. The same one they're talking about on the ocean floor. I got so much. Look, at it. I got, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on. What is this? 
Right, there's another one. See the stalk coming out here? They're everywhere, literally everywhere. Right, that's the same one, I think, with that stalk right at the bottom. Even Stonehenge has a, is made out of body parts. That's the foot. That's the heel stone. <laughs> and, oh, what is that? Well, it's just a rock. <laughs> they call it the heel stone. Guess what? There was a twin to it that they removed. It's just like they looked exactly the same. <laughs> Only it was a right foot. <laughs> oh, man. And if you know anything about anatomy and blood supply, see these little things at the end? Those are where the blood, that they call it the terminals, the blood terminals, which is the vein and arteries at the end where the artery turns back into the vein and runs up to, to replenish the blood. This is the black blood that runs down, which is the vein blood. And here you got, all, there's no way you can miss this if you have any idea whatsoever. And this can all be tested now. So, And I contacted Stonehenge about this and they said, don't ever contact us again. Believe me, this is so unwelcome what I have presented. And, I, and I'm and i going to show you something else. In that other video, I talk about Scott Walter. He was the one that caused us a lot of trouble. And they, I just got a, recently was on a show that apparently the guy that had to host the show is a friend of Scott Walter's was going to try to destroy me. And I really wiped them out. And they got real upset because I, everything I presented, I could stand behind. Nothing they could present, they could stand behind. So Scott Walter's was certainly not represented well by this guy <laughs> they got really upset it was funny so anyway let's see what they have to say about concretions because they're showing layers of tissue this is literally layers of skin and, and and tissues and then they have these anchor balls inside of them they think this is all sedimentation and so forth let's come back a little ways here and see what they have to say all right, ancient DNA and a new science of the human past. And this is Harvard. And I talked to this guy, David Reich, and um, presented him with Dr. my Dr. David evidence. Reich is, um, like many people at Harvard, does many, many things. So he is a professor in the Department of Genetics at the Harvard Medical School. Oh, whoops, this is the wrong... This is the wrong video, but I talked to David Reich, and I presented him with my DNA evidence back in 2015, and he dismissed me and said, you can't get a blood out of rocks. I said, I got blood out of rocks like you couldn't believe, and that was, and he still won't communicate with me. Neither, neither will Yale or Harvard or Johns Hopkins or University of Texas, or all of them. I presented this to everybody, and it ended up getting very, very contentious, and it is till this very day, and the same thing with Scott Walters. He refuses to engage after literally destroying my research. All right, this is a video I did back in uh, 2018, February 2018, uh, and I'm just going to let this play for a while because this was about the giant stone balls, giant stone balls. Now, I'm just going to let it play and um, listen to it because like this is like three or four years ago, four years ago. A piece of bone material, uh, a fossil, or a leaf, or a twig, as the fragments are buried, a unique geological process locks them within a stony prison. All right, first of all, they just think this is all sedimentation. That's not true. These are within layers of tissue. Over time, what happens... All right, here, this is Scott Walter. This is, you know, he... I think I mentioned it in this video. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure I do. Because he was the one that really basically destroyed everything we had to do. Um, in 20 seconds on TV, 20 seconds between the time he viewed this fossilized head, he made his assessment that it was carved and would not even discuss it after that. I mean, very, you know, adamant that he was the expert. I was nothing. I had no reason to be able to discuss it with him. And he just walked away. And then they tried to attack me just a few months ago being a friend of Scott Walters, and I destroyed him. Okay, Roger, once again, oh, McFoster University, the last and only home of truth on the planet Earth. Now, speaking of truth and uh, mistakes, this head I saw on TV you know, several years ago, and um, uh, a fellow named Jim, Jim Birchall was hoping that it would get some attention and, and, and somebody would take, uh, because it's, 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 it's completely real. And, and um, 
and uh, it was shown by Scott Walter on TV, and he said that it was a carved sandstone head, and he disagreed with Jim's, who was not a, a, a trained archaeologist like Scott said he was, and therefore he had the ability and the right to make that claim. Now, I disputed that, and I, I contacted him, and he graciously talked back and forth, and he's very nice, until I confronted him, and I said, well, can you please explain the colors of the blood and the fractures in the skull and all of the different um, anatomical features, and then uh, he just said that he was a trained... Um, well, let's put it this way. At that point, it turned not so nice. Why would somebody carve the cartilage of the nose under this, 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 this flesh being splayed away from the cartilage? He says, oh, that's just ferrous oxides. Well, where do you think ferrous oxides come from? Blood is iron. Iron is ferrous. Ferrous oxides are the red blood and the black blood because in, in black in mud fossils, it's blue normally in us. They are oxides of iron because that's uh, some have more oxygen than other that's what an oxide is <laughs> ferrous oxides well somebody carved this and absolutely was adamant and they're still trying to stand up for that position like i said it was only a few months ago i think i forget what the guy's name is rex or something and uh, and he had a geologist on there oh i'm a trained geologist oh, this guy's a fool what uh, who would talk to a moron like this and he finally just hung up and um but I, because everything I did crushed everything he said. So that's that's the mentality, and that's the tone I get from all of people that say they are trained. I am trained. I will listen to people tell me what to say, and I am going to say it, and that means it's right. No, it means it's wrong, and you cannot think for yourself, basically, is my point. And that's where we're looking at Scott Walter. I have no respect for his opinions whatsoever. I haven't found a single thing he said that's correct now. I've been following him, and this is just not a single word he said is, is right. If he could stand up for anything he said, I'd love to hear it. All right, so anyway, I got that off my chest. <laughs> Here goes. Forensics person, and he just didn't need to explain it to me because I didn't understand. So, and then we sort of parted ways. Now, that mortally wounded me, actually, and uh, because it, we ended up taking this down to uh, University of Texas in Austin to have it camp. Now, what happened, let me just explain to why I took it to University of Texas, because I got hold of Yale. I said, we've got specimens. I've got them. Mine are DNA tested, which are my, my stuff is not this, but my stuff is DNA tested and CAT scanned and has all the... All the um, evidence and the credentials behind it to prove it's true. And then this, I figured, well, how can they possibly dismiss this? Well, Yale said, well, you'd have to have a CAT scan, you'd have to do this. I said, I will do all those stuff. And Jim did. He took it down to the University of Texas in Austin because that's the one they recommended. They didn't want to scan it. They, they re basically refused. And I said, no, you, you have to do this. And they said, well, it'll cost you $1,500. And I said, well, whatever. And Jim did pay it, I believe, which I wouldn't have paid him because of what they did. They refused to discuss not even one word after they did the CAT scan. I wanted to ask him about the content of the you know moisture, how that would affect it. Not a single word. Now, and that ended up being very, very nasty. And it actually ended up with police and lawyers and everything because I said, no, I'm not going to walk away from this. Well, when they threaten you so much that you have to walk away, you, you have to walk away. And I did. I had to walk away. But I said, I'm coming back. Don't worry. And here I am. 